Victoria Cycle to Argentina Seven months into our journey cycling from Alaska to Argentina, we'd made it to the desert. And as a nice, warm welcome, Mother Nature decided to grace us with a fresh dump of snow. It was the middle of winter, after all. So we waited out the storm in the only motel in town, and after a few days of editing, the sun came out again. We've been in the hotel for a few days, and today is the first sunny day. So I've just handed back the keys to the room, and we're gonna give it a shot. And the next valley apparently gets much less snow, a lot drier, so we're gonna try and make it there. What do you got to say about that? Oi! In this episode, we ride 512 miles through a very chilly northern Nevada towards the town of Tonopah. Vamos! Look at that. <laughs> Bit snowy today, but not too bad. We do have to go up over a mountain pass up there. So that might be a bit more snowy. We got into Gerlach to a nice meal in the local bar and met some pretty interesting characters. <laughs> Let's go! There you go. <laughs> Good job! This is so cool. One of those people we met was Fee, who works for Burning Man Festival, which takes place just a few miles from here. With another storm on the forecast for the next couple of days, Fee kindly offered us his sprinter van so we could have some shelter to wait it out and set off again when the sun returned. The storm has arrived and this is just the start of the snow and this is going to go on for eight more hours. So we'll see how much snow that adds up to. Hopefully not too much because we are down in the desert after all. Loaded up. We're now headed for Winnie Mucker. Gracias, Fee. That's Gerlach. And this is the Black Rock Desert. We were carrying everything we would need for the next three days in the wild. Our bikes were heavy with all the food and 20 litres of water. But after so long being confined to the highway shoulder, this felt like freedom. And it was only just the beginning. You're a woman and you're traveling in a road like this. Use a bra. I think if we go up here a bit, we can probably camp between these dunes somewhere. The cool thing about Nevada is that 67% of it is public BLM land, which means that on roads like this, you can pretty much camp wherever you like. It's extremely cold. Let me show you. Minus four. Minus four. Already. 
Wow. Buenas las tengan. So last night it got down to minus nine, which I think is a new record, but we could probably survive lower. I think minus 12, that would be the limit. We'll see. This is the old town of Sulphur and this is the only building left standing out in the middle of nowhere. Gonna put the tent right there, I think. Ta da! That's gotta be a cool shot. Andale, way! Rapido! Woo! So that right there is Winnie Mucker. It's a video. Bienvenidos a Winnie Mucker. We are headed up the hill from Winnemucca to a little free BLM campsite because we've got a very special visitor coming. This is Daniel. He's the head honcho at Tumbleweed and the guy who made the bikes we've been riding since Alaska. Daniel from Tumbleweed has visited us and brought us many gifts. That is a brand new prospector. That's a beautiful bike. Since Alaska, Victoria had been riding Tumbleweed's slightly lighter and speedier drop bar model, the Stargazer. But some of the routes we had in mind would certainly lend themselves to something a little more beefy. Built around a roll-off internal gear hub in the back, an obscene amount of tyre clearance and some comfy wide bars. It's a bike that can handle some of the most heinous scenarios possible and it couldn't have come at a better time. But Victoria wasn't the only one being spoiled. Look how shiny. New cog, new chain, new chain ring, new cranks. And also a fresh new rear tire and a set of tumbleweed racks. It's like Christmas. Tumbleweed now is still very small. We have, um, it's, I mean, my wife and I, my wife uh, Margot, is, she works behind the scenes and kind of helps us actually function as a business. and keeps things from falling apart. Um, but we have our own, finally our own um, little commercial space where we assemble bikes and I have two mechanics who are, who are helping me out now. So we're still just focused on growing organically and just keeping the quality as high as it possibly can. We've had people ride them in you know, the most remote uh, challenging places in the world. We've never had a frame fail. They're very, very robust and really built for extreme extreme use. Daniel and Tumbleweed have been a huge supporter of our journey ever since the beginning and I'm not even sure it would have been possible without their backing. So it was very special to be able to meet the guy behind it all. Happy birthday to you! Half a muffin of course. Half a muffin. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, do it in the in the tent room. <laughs> no wind. Daniel's heading down the hill with Victoria's new bike, which means that this is the final ride <laughs> on the Stargazer. I love this bicycle. Thank you, Daniel. I mean, I've told you before, but I'm really happy to be supporting you guys. And oh, thank you. I'm glad that I could be there from like the very beginning. Yeah. So. Cool. Well, safe travels. Yeah, drive safe, man. Yeah. Let me know. What we'll do. We'll do. Yeah. So since Daniel came to visit, um, I've made a few changes to the bike setup because he was able to bring a bunch of stuff. So this is the new look for now. So I've got a pair of Mountain Laurel Designs panniers on the back, um, a new set of tumbleweed racks. I've moved the license plate up front and then Victoria has a brand new bike. This is um, a Prospector, which is the same model as mine, but just a size small. I have my new handlebars back here. We're definitely very heavy loaded right now just because we have five days of food and a lot of water. Hey, lift that. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll try and lift yours. I think yours is heavy. <laughs> it's heavy. <laughs> Not too bad. It's back. Yeah. All right, let's get back out into the desert. Should take us around four or five days to get to the next town. The role of men. It's so smooth, it's so nice. I can change from from one to fourteen with no problem. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you so much. Yelem <laughs> Land. I think right here we'll do the trick. Just a little bit of wind protection. What's up guys? Tonight we're gonna make some dinner. Black beans, summer sausage, the avocado. Let's go. The habanero sauce. It's, it's a spider. No, it's it's like a kind of spider scorpion cross, but it's it's definitely disgusting. springs here right off the road the question is will Victoria swim let's <laughs> get as fast as she can <laughs> ah, don't mommy you could become a tree in there <laughs> <laughs> like that's just boiling water that's boiling man
packed up. Victoria's nearly all packed up. This is just glorious. Look at that. Beautiful tailwind, sun is shining, and it's a very gentle downhill. This felt like the bikepacking I would dream about when I was planning out this trip years ago. Effortlessly cruising along a lonely dirt road through endless wide open desert landscapes. I've always been a little obsessed with the desert and to me, this felt like paradise. We're kind of out in the middle of nowhere now, but there is a geothermal plant over there that we're gonna see if we can nab some water off. Not bad. Better than nothing. Better than nothing. We don't want to ride through this when it's raining. We've got some jets practicing their dog fighting. That is the highway after five days. It's been a while. Fallon. So we're cycling next to you a US Air Force bombing range. I just caught a sick bomb. Check out the clip here. Come on, one more bomb. Whoa. After a few days in Fallon, we are now heading out again. We got six days of food, three days of water to get us to Tonopah. Um, and halfway there's a little town called Gabs, which we can fill up on water, hopefully. So yeah, we got around 10 miles and then we'll be on a nice little dirt road that we found. I was just able to finish editing episode seven, which I'm really proud of. I think that's my favorite yet. That's the one where we were in Canada and winter struck. I hope I've done it justice because that was just such an incredible few weeks. Look at her back there, vlogging away. I've turned her into a little YouTuber now. Well, maybe by the time you see this, she'll be a huge YouTuber. This is a great road. <laughs> Literally, I think if you choose any dirt road through Nevada, it's gonna be stunning. Don't think you can go wrong out here. Three dark days. Three dark days. Three dark days since they locked me away. It's been three dark days. Cold as hell in my lonely cell, it's cold as hell. Oh. I think I've never been more happy for being outside in the dirt and being full of dirt and sweat. It's just, 
I highly recommend it. Man, this is so fun. Man, I'm gonna have a body after this. Like, ugh, have no idea how sexy. And then things started to take a turn for the worst. What is this? What should I do, man? There's nothing you can do. You just gotta keep pushing. I'm so glad I have a fish picture. <laughs> yeah, your derailer would be fun. Three, two, one, go! Ah! Ah! Oh, <laughs> you're okay. <laughs> you ready? Three, two, one, go! After that ordeal, we set up camp and woke up to a fresh blanket of snow, both outside and inside the tent. It's not too bad. Which surprisingly worked out in our favour, as it froze the mud and allowed us to travel over it without too much trouble. This is absolutely stunning. That's our road. Back on pavement. Feels very well deserved after the last few days. Run for your life! Run! Tenemos que escapar esa tormenta. It looks like it's about to end. Yeah, it was quite nice. <laughs> cool. How cold is it gonna get tonight? Minus eight. It's our very last cold day. Oh. Our very last one. So we're gonna use all the hand warmers we got because we're not gonna have a use for them after this. <laughs> we're gonna put them in our socks. Hello, I gotta say that today is a very hard day, um, I'm in the worst day of my period and the wind, we have headwind and we're gonna have headwind tomorrow too. Uh, another thing I just wanted to tell you, 
I, I already cried like three times. But well, we don't have enough food and water to stay one more night and just rest. So we're just gonna get to the next town and yeah. Sometimes that's just how it is and you just need to keep pedaling, I'm afraid. We've just hit pavement again. Which is nice, but the headwind today is absolutely crazy. It's going to be quite a tough ride into town. Why am I doing this? <laughs> I think this is officially the most intense headwind I've ever experienced in my life. We've got another 15 miles to Tonopah and we're moving at like walking speed. Are you enjoying Tonopa? I love it. <laughs> it's incredible here. So nice. A and W. Yeah, got the A and W. That's the most important thing. Everything you need, it's here. Miren nomás estas hermosuras. 